Okay, so you're looking to get into computer-aided design or CAD, but you're not quite sure what kind of a system that you need. Do you really need one of those multi-thousand dollar workstations stuffed with pricey professional grade hardware? Or can you scrape by with consumer gear? To find out, we loaded up SolidWorks' website and looked at their suggested system requirements, which were basically useless. So then we took it a step further and asked SolidWorks to provide a license and Nvidia to provide some of their Quadro graphics cards, which they both graciously provided, and we resolved to test it ourselves. Today's video is brought to you by Zotac. Their Mech One PC is an ultra slim desktop built for gaming, featuring a sleek robotic style design. Check it out now at the link below. Let's get this out of the way right off the bat. SolidWorks can be run on lower end hardware. A laptop with a Core i5 CPU, integrated graphics and eight gigs of RAM will actually get the job done just fine if you're making single parts or small assemblies, let's say up to around 10 parts or so. In fact, I go as far as to say that it'll be plenty to get you through engineering 1003, but you won't get much further than that. The performance won't be optimal and while on a desktop, running a simulation or a render for a day isn't going to be an issue, hitting a laptop with 100% load for 20 hours at a time could end very poorly. In fact, that's how Alex, the writer of this episode, lost his first laptop back when he was in school. So you will need a desktop at some point, but there's a ton of information out there about how that desktop should be configured. And it ranges from pretty good to super outdated all the way to downright misleading. So to cut through the BS, we did a bunch of testing to give you an idea of what kind of experience you can expect with different classes of hardware. We used both SpecView Perf, which gives you an accurate look at CPU and GPU performance while manipulating a model, and a render of this AlphaCool 360 radiator to give us a feel for rendering performance. We'll discuss different GPU choices first, since a small misstep here could easily cause you to pay a high price for terrible performance. On that subject, Nvidia's GeForce lineup might look pretty good on paper or when compared to Intel's integrated graphics, for example, but once you line it up against AMD's RX 580 and Vega lineup, they get completely stomped at times. The real world performance between the two is actually usually similar to what you might expect, with a GTX 1070 being within spitting distance of a Vega 56 and so on and so forth. But this changes dramatically when you throw contours and shaded edges into the mix, which for some reason completely tank the consumer grade GeForce drivers. With all of that said, Team Red shouldn't act too high and mighty here because Big and hot, Vega 64's impressive lead melts away immediately when you pull out the big guns. Or rather, the really small guns. This is the entry level and power sipping Quadro P1000 that stomped all over all but the highest end consumer cards. And then from there, the Quadros, which also have extra features like real view rendering, continue their dominance thanks to their superior driver pathway. Like uh, the P2000, a $600 card was able to beat out the Titan V, which is a $3,000 card and a prosumer one at that. The only real oddity here was that the P5000 and the P6000 ended up beating the GP100. Maybe this was thanks to our particular workload favoring higher clock speeds over higher memory bandwidth. With all of that said, not everyone can afford a thousand plus dollars for a mid-tier Quadro. So our budget recommendation is an RX 580. If you're a student who plans to mostly game and occasionally solid works it up, you'll be really happy with its excellent bang for the buck. But if you're doing any kind of professional work, you need to get a Quadro. The sweet spot seems to be the P4000. 
it's relatively affordable, and its performance allows you to create massive models with 500 plus components in 4K without drops in frame rate. With that said, if your firm wants to throw some of that sweet, sweet engineering money your way, a P5000 will tear through just about anything that you could throw at it. As a side note here, by the way, SolidWorks doesn't support multiple GPUs, so SLI won't give you any benefit whatsoever. Moving on to CPU options. For modeling, in theory, all you should be concerned about is single core performance, meaning that the Core i7-8700K should be the winner. And in the real world, it is, and by a lot. Now that's not to say that multi-threaded muscle will go completely unused though. For simulations and for rendering, the time to complete goes down nearly directly proportionally to the number of cores that you can throw at the problem. And this makes Intel's Core i9s and Xeon Ws and AMD's Threadripper chips look pretty attractive for folks who plan on doing this kind of work regularly. With that being said, if you're doing lots of rendering, it will probably be in Keyshot or Blender, and simulations will probably be taken care of by Abacus or Altair Hyperworks, in which case, high multi-threaded performance, yeah, it's still definitely a good thing, but a Core i9 is out of the question because Intel's HEDT lineup lacks support for ECC memory, Xeon Ws will have a hard time justifying their trade-off in terms of price, and Threadripper single-threaded performance makes it far less appealing. Besides, for most CAD designers, these types of workloads can easily be set to run after hours and usually with help from other nodes on the network. Bottom line then, unless you're trying to build a one-size-fits-all type of machine, in which case you might have to spring for a Xeon W, for modeling, the Core i7-8700K is still our recommendation. As for AMD's Ryzen processors, they're just unfortunately not an optimal choice for SolidWorks. An 8700K in our testing with a Quadro P5000 scored 8% better than an R7-1800X with a Quadro P6000. And the 1800X also loses in multi-threaded workloads. As for system memory, you're gonna need 16 gigs of RAM as a minimum but you won't need more than that until you're working with models that are well over 500 parts in size. And as for SSDs, we found that NVMe or Optane SSDs didn't have an appreciable impact on performance beyond how quickly your model will load. Though, as a reminder here, we were really focused on modeling rather than simulation performance. So in summary then, if we were to recommend a computer for SolidWorks, we consider the best bang for the buck budget workstation right now to be an Intel Core i7-8700K, a Quadro P4000, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD placed in whatever case is quiet with great airflow. So for our workstation, which we'll be keeping together, we've got a Silverstone FT04. Now, when and if entry-level six-core Coffee Lake Xeons show up, they could change our recommendation here, depending on pricing, but for the time being, they don't exist, so they're not an option. Now, if you wanna scale our build down, you can save a buck with a Core i5-8400, but I wouldn't go much lower, and you can swap out that P4000 with a P1000 or a P2000 as your budget allows. If you wanna scale our build up, however, because maybe you convinced your boss that, well, time is money, you know, and he or she gave you a blank check for a build, then you will get some more benefit all the way up to the top end, like a Xeon W2195, which is the 18 core equivalent to the Core i9 Extreme Edition, and a Quadro P6000. So if for whatever reason you've got that option, then go for it. Not because it actually makes a ton of sense, we talked about that already, but rather because that's sick hardware. And if you're allowed to buy it, you should do it. Speaking of doing things, if your job is to like do stuff, you're a small business owner or a freelancer, and you're looking for an accounting solution 
FreshBooks is the way to go. It's the simple way to be more productive, more organized, and get paid quickly. You can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. You can set up online payments with just a couple of clicks to get paid up to four days faster. You can see when a client has seen your invoice to put an end to the guessing games, and you can take their expense and time tracking features with you on the go with their fully featured Android and iOS apps. So check them out and get a 30 day unrestricted free trial at freshbooks.com slash tech tips and enter Linus tech tips in the how did you hear about us section. We'll have that linked below. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.